Global Social Leaders. My name is Jakob and I'm excited to make this intro into our first ever masterclass in our very new masterclass series. This is the fifth year of the competition and we are super excited to tell you about a new format that we're running this year. So the competition runs in four phases. So the first one is take action. So this is all about you making the first steps by completing your registration, team registration, student registration, also looking at you know, a project plan, getting those ideas together, thinking about which global goals you want to, you want to support this year, and putting together a plan and making your first steps into the social action. So doing something of your project. So very simple, as, this, as the name says, take action. Then we go into phase two, which is our power up. So this is all about taking your project to that next level. So this is a new feature this year. So comparing to last year, we've, we've asked you for a project plan. This year we want a project update report. So that means that you don't have to wait for us to, for feedback to get started and doing amazing things in your local community. You can start from the first day of the competition. So Power Up is all about you letting us know what you've been up to, what did you manage to do and which kind of areas you would like to get support from. So then our Global Goals heroes can give you some feedback and you can take that to the next level. But powering up is also about writing blogs, making your message out there on social media so that we are using our creative powers for the benefit of our project. Then phase three is all about sharing your story. And this is something that we are so excited about every year. So it's all about you uh, documenting as you go along what you've been up to and then sharing it with us in, in, in the form of the final submission, which is a three minute digital submission and a two page report. So remember, these are the, the things that you're gonna be judged on. So make sure that you take your time and put the effort in to, uh, to prepare that um, incredible final submission. And for, uh, phase four, uh, and I think it's our favorite one, it's celebration. It's all about you uh, and, and your team's uh, achievements and successes over the years and maybe failures. We are happy to welcome any, any, any bits of failure you have because that's where we learn. So we invite you all in June to join our GSL Festival. This is a festival that has been created to celebrate the students who take part in the Global Goals competition. So we are super excited to have you on it. And this is the fourth phase. Uh, we all want to celebrate your journey because it's all about your success. So just um, because we know there are teams that maybe took part in this competition for many years. So please make sure to read our uh, very new uh, competition booklet that tells you all about those new changes to the phases and give you more detail. There's some excellent resources packed into that uh, competition booklet. And you can also find it on our website in the resources page. And that's also where you can find this masterclass. So the second new addition to the competition this year is the masterclass series. And I am so really excited and privilege to be uh, introducing your host for this uh, first uh, ever masterclass, Dami Omole uh, from our team. She's an absolute superstar. She's done some amazing projects herself. So she's talking from experience. So uh, please welcome all to the stage, uh, Dami Omole. Thank you. So let's get into the bulk of this masterclass, the project cycle. Questions such as, why should we plan our project cycle? How should we plan our project cycle? And who should be involved in our project are a few of the things that we're gonna to touch on over the next couple of minutes. So why should we plan? Why not just go where the wind takes us? Why not just um, go with the flow? Whilst being spontaneous has its benefits, Planning your social action project from the start is really, really important. And yes, 
this plan will likely change as new priorities creep up or as you're solving challenges along the way. So the plan will change. But having a plan provides direction for all members of the team. You'll be able to keep communication clear. Every member of the team will know exactly what they're doing. And decision making between the team becomes a lot easier because you all will have agreed on a plan of action. When you're able to plan, you can also make much better strategic decisions. For example, if new opportunities arise or new challenges arise, you are able to weigh up those challenges alongside your project plan and really ascertain whether that new opportunity or that new challenge that presents itself um, is taking you closer towards your project plan or further away from your, um, from your goals. So you can make bigger strategic decisions if you plan from the very start. So planning is important. And I hope that you will take the time during your social action um, journey uh, to really pull together a strong, solid plan. But how can you do that? And I'm going to talk through a little um, or a few tips to give you when planning your social action plans or pulling together your social action plans. When planning, I would suggest you start with the problem or need in your local community. So ask questions, always ask questions. Questions such as, what problems exist in my school? What problems exist in my family? What problems exist in my local community or city? What is missing? What do we need? What do our family members need? What do our friends need? What do our teachers need? What do policymakers need? And asking those questions can really, really crystallize what the problem is that you're trying to solve. It will help you identify what problem is within your local community that you can really target with the social action project. And for example, I know a local charity. This charity is called The Avengers. They are based in the UK. The Avengers became very excited. They learned about this big global issue called female cutting or FGM, female genital mutilation, that is most prevalent in certain African countries. And they became really passionate about supporting the victims of FGM globally. However, over the years, um, and as they began to ask questions, they actually found that there were victims within their local communities in the UK who were not getting as much support, who were not getting as much visibility, who were not getting as much um, attention as uh, compared to you know, uh, the victims globally. Not many people within their local community knew how to support victims of, of female cutting and knew how to, um, or, or there were not many that many services in their local communities that supported women who had gone through this experience. They found a problem. The injustice of um, FGM or, or, or female cutting and the lack of awareness and support is also very prevalent in the UK and in their local communities. And not many people were plugging this gap. Not many people were solving this problem and not many people were fulfilling this need in this country, in their local communities. And that was the thing that was missing. So once you've thought about questions, ask questions, ask many questions, once you've asked those questions and you've found a few problems that you want to solve, I would then suggest thinking about how those problems align with the 17 sustainable development goals. As I mentioned, there are 17 of them and they range from no poverty and zero hunger to gender equality and climate action. For example, the Vivendus charity that I mentioned previously, they align their mission and they align the, the need that they're trying to fulfill with good health and well-being, gender equality, peace, justice, and strong institutions. And there's, you know, you can have more than, than one thing that your or one goal that your um, need is, is fulfilling. 
So really take time to read through all the sustainable development goals and, and outline which one of those goals your problem um, pertains to and your social action plan will be, will be hitting on as well. So think, the problem in your local community, this thing that you want to, to target, this burning desire um, of a challenge that you want to tackle, does it relate to poverty? Does it relate to climate change? Or does it relate to life below water or life on land? Once you have that problem, align it with a sustainable development goal and then think about what projects you can put in place to solve that problem. So you've identified a problem. You've identified a sustainable development goal you would like to align it to. What next? Great question. <laughs> it is now time to start planning. And you can do this by identifying what goals you would like to put in place. And think about this. Goals should be specific. They should be measurable. They should be achievable. They should be relevant. And there should be a time frame. So they should be time bound. And this metric are called SMART goals. And I'm sure that many of you would have come across this metric before. But I'll work through what each of them mean um, so that we can really make sure our goals are SMART or as SMART as possible. So S stands for specific. And there are five questions that I would like you to answer when thinking about your social action plan or thinking about your, your plan that's targeting a, a global issue. One is, what do I want to accomplish? With this social action plan that I'm putting in place, with this project that I'm putting in place to solve this local issue or global issue, what do I want to accomplish? What is the objective? Two, why is this goal important? And you can link it to the sustainable development goals because all of them are extremely important. So why is it important? Why is it important for this community? Why is it important for, for example, human rights? Why is it important for uh, sustainable development? Why is it important? And you can also link that to the impact it's going to have on people in the local community. Three, who's going to be involved? Who are the major stakeholders? Who are the major team members? Who do you need to engage? What teachers, what head teachers, what local community leaders or government officials, officials need to join to make this project a successful one? Think about who really needs to be involved and where is it located? So the fourth, fourth, the fourth is where is it located? So what is the geographical spread of your project? Is it only based socially? Is it based in a local town or in a wider community? How large do you want this project to be? And what resources, number five, what resources or limits are involved? What do you need to make it happen? What financial, what uh, incentives um, do you need to make this project a reality? What physical resources, what natural resources, what support do you need to make this happen? And then also linking to that, what limits do you have? So what things are you lacking or what do you have that, or what don't you have that can stop it from, from, from making it a reality? So sit down and think, we want to make our goal specific and answer these five questions. What do I want to accomplish? Why is this goal important? Who is involved? Where is it located? Which resources or limits are involved? M is measurable. So we need to find a way to track the progress of your project over time. How would you know if your project is successful if you find no way of measuring it? So we'll speak a little bit more about measuring impact on, in the next masterclass series, but I want you to think about the following questions. How much, how many, and how will I know when I've reached success? How will I know when this project is successful? So it, maybe it's how many people I will reach. Maybe it is how much I will raise, although money is not the only project you could run or not the only thing you can do perhaps that might be a measure of success for you how many people could I reach how many people could I have talking about this social action project how many 
uh, you know, how many cities are going to change legislation because because of this project. So think about how you can quantify the impact of your work in a way that we can measure how successful it is going to be because it's going to be successful. Number three, is your goal achievable? This is an interesting one because sometimes we have these big dreams about global issues. And while we love that, dream big, always dream big, we need to start somewhere. So the way I would frame this aspect of small goals is thinking about your limitations. What limitations do I have right now that I, you know, the limitations that I have, perhaps I can adjust my goal or my plan accordingly. So what limitations do you have and adjust the goal based on those limitations? Perhaps, for example, you've been given the opportunity to speak to your, you know, to speak in front of your entire community on this important issue. And they have only given you 10 minutes to deliver this presentation. Perhaps trying to fit 10 hours worth of content into that 10 minutes is not achievable. Or perhaps you would like to raise 10,000 pounds, but you only have 10,000 pounds or $10,000, depending on you are, or any other currency. Um, but you only have one week work, one week's worth of marketing time. Think about those limitations, the potential pinch points for you and adjust your goal accordingly. So perhaps instead of 10,000, you could raise 5,000 or 2,000 within that time frame. Perhaps instead of 10 hours worth of content, you can actually stream it a, a lot down and share a story instead, which will touch the hearts of people rather than loads of statistics. So you can adjust your goals accordingly. Um, just a point in relation to that, that money piece, that Raising money is not the only project you can come up with. It can certainly be one, but there are other ways you can make impact. You can do posters, you can have events, you can create forums, anything as long as that goal is achievable. Number four, is your goal relevant? Firstly, remind yourself of the sustainable development goals. It's probably going to be relevant um, if it relates to one of those sustainable development goals, but also think about a, a few other questions about whether what you're doing is relevant for the people that you're trying to impact or the community or the environment. And there are a few questions that you can ask when asking, is my project relevant? One, does this project seem worthwhile? What do I mean about that? What, what do I mean by that? If you're using loads and loads of resources, you've raised loads of money, you're using loads of um, uh, time, created loads of uh, events, and actually there's only a small change or a small impact, for example, you need to ask yourself whether it was worth it. Could you have done something that took less energy, that took less resources and had the same amount of impact or even more? So that's a question you can ask. Is it worth it? Is it worthwhile? Is this the right time? Think about it. If you're working, for example, if you, you're trying to impact education outcomes and you would rather do like lunchtime classes, but actually you'll get better engagement on the weekend, maybe it is it it's a better time to do it on the weekends rather than at lunch times during the week. So is this the right time? Another question you could ask is, am I the right person to reach this goal? Perhaps you would need to work with partners and we'll speak a little bit about developing partnerships a, a little bit later on, but perhaps you need to work with partners to, uh, to reach a large audience or to reach the people that you want to reach. Um, so think, who are the right people that can get on my team to make this goal relevant? Or, for example, are you reaching the right people? Perhaps you're really um, passionate about a subject and you're preaching to the, to the choir or you're preaching to the wrong audience, right? So making sure that not only you are the right person to deliver the goal um, and working with people that can have a, a greater reach, but also the audience that you're trying to reach. And the last question, is this applicable in the current environment? The last one I'll touch on is time bound. We need to put a bit of a time frame on this thing. Great plan, um, but 
think about where you want to be in the next couple of months or in the next couple of years and then work backwards from there. So where do you want to be in six months? Okay, I want to have delivered a, a, a big event to increase awareness on climate change. Amazing goal, fantastic goal. But what can you do in five months to make sure that event happens at the six month mark? What can you do at four months and at three months and at two months um, to make sure that that goal happens at six months and what can you do today to make sure that that happens in six months and plan accordingly um, backwards so those are smart goals and while project planning the last thing I'm going to touch on is the team the team is so important I always say this to people that people why I say this to, to anyone I'm talking to, people are the most important asset and aspect of any movement. They are the most important resource and reason for any movement. So think about your team. Think about each person's strengths and work with your team to create roles within this project. Perhaps you'd want to give more general roles, so someone be a project coordinator, someone be a, a marketing specialist, someone be a designer, or perhaps you'd want to work together uh, more collaboratively as a team, but work with your team to really um, understand their strengths um, and, and what they will be responsible for throughout the project, because it would make it a lot smoother. As you're planning your project, assign people responsibilities that align with that project plan. And we've come to the end of today's masterclass session, the very first one. Um, good luck with your project. Good luck with project planning. Good luck with setting priorities. Good luck with engaging your team members and assigning roles and hopefully see you at the next masterclass. Happy project planning.